So I feel like I'm the last person who's finding out about this, but apparently Barack Obama, former president, is working with Netflix to produce his own sketch comedy show. Why? I have no idea, but I am really hoping that it tanks and nobody watches it. And apparently Fox News agrees with me. Yeah, I hate it when somebody who's a terrible person or a terrible network makes a good point. But they're kind of right. They don't like this. And it's not necessarily because they, you know, um, they think that Obama is unfunny because I think he probably would be, but because they just have to basically carry on this notion that Obama is bad no matter what. Anyways, uh, to talk about this is an expert on the subject of comedy. So Fox News brought on comedian Jeff Dunham, and he explained why this was a bad idea, but the interview itself didn't really touch on Obama. Instead, Jeff Dunham ended up talking about cancel culture, and what really struck me was the way that the Fox host fake laughed throughout this whole thing, and her fake laugh made me cry laugh. Like, I kid you not. I've watched this so many times by now, but now I want to share it with you. So somehow that very unfunny man now has his own sketch comedy show on Netflix. That's right. The former president and first lady are producing a show called The G Word, which is expected to be loosely based on an anti-Trump book about the supposed chaos during the transition in 2016. It's not only the comedy series no one in America is not asking for, it's also just more competition for my next guest, who is joining me now, Jeff Dunham, whose new comedy special, completely unrehearsed, last-minute pandemic holiday special, premiered tonight on Comedy Central. Congrats about that. So, Thanks, Lisa. So, Jeff, this is really something that, you know, we need more of, which is anti-Trump bias. There's, there's not enough of that right now. Yeah, it, Walter. Uh, Lisa, you didn't introduce me to this time, and thanks for having me on the show. I got a question for you before we get into the Obama thing. So sitting in for Laura uh, over Thanksgiving, is this like a career move or did you lose a bet? <laughs> well, I would say <laughs> career move, but I, you know, I'm sure the people who hate me would say other things. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I, as, for, as for the Obama sketch uh, comedy show, I, I just, I honestly don't understand it. There's the dignity of the office. There's the 72 million people, uh, you know, that voted the other way. Uh, this year, so I, I, it really bewilders me. But did you know, Lisa? Did you know this that Obama actually wanted to be our opening act in our Comedy Central special this time? Did you know that? Why? Well, I hope he said no because he's not very funny. Well, but we didn't say no. The Secret Service said no because they wouldn't let Jeff stuff him in the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that would probably raise some alarms. I would assume among the Secret Service. But so here, I mean, look, why the com comedians barely touch Joe Biden. Like, I can give you plenty of material. He sat around with kids around him talking about a guy named Corn Pop. He talked about when he was a lifeguard at the pool. Kids touched his hairy legs. I mean, right there, target rich environment. Why have comedians not? They've barely touched it. I, you know, it's it's that, that the cancel culture, because it's it's amazing how Comics now, uh, I used to say that, that stand-up comedy was the last form of free speech. It's not anymore, because you know how it is. Everybody has a voice now. Everybody's on social media. There used to be the sanctity of the comedy club or the sanctity of, uh, you know, the, the live show. Uh, but now, um, and I used to say, if you were offending 5% of the audience, it was a good it was a good number, because the 5% that were ticked off, whatever they were mad at, the other 95% were laughing at. But now, unfortunately, that 5% can end your career with a couple of tweets. So it's it's becoming really difficult now. But so why do you think we've arrived at this moment, though? I mean, you're, you're talking about some of the cancel culture we see. We literally see people go through, you know, social media accounts like five years ago, right, and try to destroy someone's career. So why, why have we arrived at this point? Well, I, I, again, I think it's the social media. I think that uh, everybody has a voice now. and everybody there, It didn't used to be that way. You didn't hear from Joe Schmo. But now Joe Schmo can say whatever he wants. He can hide in his basement, hide behind his... Uh, uh, his computer screen and his keyboard and just say what he wants. And so like tonight, my premiere, uh, uh, my special premiered and I was talking to the people that look at this stuff for me. And I said, how are the numbers? How's it, you know, how is, uh, what are the reactions? Reactions are good. And then what percentage of haters do we have? Well, there, <laughs> because... there's, there's always haters. <laughs> right. But I, I do, I, I, I don't know the answer to this. And for the people that tend to uh, lean a little bit right, 
uh, yeah, there's no room for you. Um, it is amazing how it's just like voting. It's the same thing. If you leaned a little bit right, we're going to vote uh, for Trump. You didn't dare tell anyone. It's the same with comics right. uh, or anybody in show business right now. Um, or many businesses. And you Jeff, can't say. I, I want to make you sure. You can't say if you're leaning right. So tell me a little bit about your special and why people should tune in. Well, uh, this was really was a last minute special. I've been sitting around for, for months and I thought I got to do something. Here's when I knew I had to do something. I was in the kitchen with my five-year-old twin boys and my wife. I picked up a chip clip to make it talk. My boys were on the floor laughing. They thought it was a comedic genius. I thought I got to get out of this house. So we threw this special together and uh, some really good writers. We put it all together. We put it on stage. I only thought it up two months ago. We shot it three weeks ago and now it's on the air. Uh, it's aired a couple times already on your coast and it's going to air in just a few minutes at eight o'clock our time here on the West Coast. But I, I did it because I feel people need laughs and there's no politics in this special whatsoever. Uh, so I've changed that up a little bit. It's for the whole family. And I, I just think it's go goofy, stupid fun. Yeah, I like your show. No. Well, Jeff and Walter, I can't forget uh, you little guy, or I guess old, old guy. You look, uh, you know, I mean, you look kind of okay. young, but you know. So I think that the reason why this segment really resonated with me is because like what Jeff Dunham said, it wasn't funny at all. And if you found it funny, it certainly wasn't funny enough to warrant that level of laughter. So sitting in for Laura uh, over Thanksgiving, is this like a career move or did you lose a bet? <laughs> I've gotten already like way too much mileage out of this segment. <laughs> but um apparently uh Jeff Dunham has some thoughts about cancel culture, like a lot of comedians nowadays. Uh but here's the thing. She asked them about Obama and Obama's comedy show and specifically why it doesn't seem as if Joe Biden, who is kind of a target-rich environment, is kind of like untouchable for a lot of comedians. And to that, I would say uh, he is made fun of all the time. In fact, some of the memes that I've seen on the internet, at least, I don't know about comedians, but the memes that I've seen have been the funniest of this entire political cycle. So he is someone who is made fun of a lot, and I hope that that continues because, of course, as president... Sure, he's going to have a lot of fuck-ups, he's going to make a lot of gaffes, and I hope that people capitalize on that. Having said that, though, this was Jeff Dunham's response, and yes, I actually took the time to transcribe what he said. You know, it's it's that, that cancel culture, because it's amazing how comics now, I used to say that stand-up comedy was the last form of free speech. That's stupid. It's not anymore, because you know how it is. Everybody has a voice now. Everybody is on social media. There used to be the sanctity of the comedy club, okay? The sanctity of the live show. But now, and I used to say, if you were offended, uh, if you offended 5% of the audience, it was a good night because the 5% that were ticked off, whatever they were mad at, the other 95% were laughing. But now, that 5% can end your career with a couple of tweets. So it's becoming really difficult now. So um, that was a really wild ride that he took us on. But I think the point that he's trying to make is that since now people have smartphones, like what you say at the comedy club doesn't just stay in the comedy club. Like they can film you. So if you say something racist, as I'm assuming he has in the past, uh, then they could put it on Twitter and that could end your career. But he's speaking as if he knows from experience what it's like to be canceled when you're on Fox News. You're there talking about your new comedy special on Netflix. So have you been canceled? I mean, at some point in time, I'm sure that somebody has tweeted that they were offended by Jeff Dunham, but join the club, buddy. I'm not a comedian. And I've been tweeted that I'm canceled. Not like that specifically, but I've been told that I've made offensive comments that were offensive to one person and another person. And I've criticized this politician too much. Like our thoughts and views are subjective. And yes, everybody does have a voice now, but you're not canceled. You're on television. So what's the problem? What's the point that you're trying to make? What if it's the case that people aren't watching you because you're not funny? What if that's what it is? What if it's not cancel culture? And what if you just don't produce good content? And I love how he speaks up as if he's this like bold truth teller and this renegade who's speaking out against ca cancel culture. But then he says this, there's no politics in this special whatsoever. Okay, <laughs> so so if you're not if you're not going to talk about politics, then I mean theoretically, there's no fear that you're going to be canceled. So what the problem is?
And I just want to remind you that this basically was supposed to be a segment where they attack Obama because that really is genuinely offensive to me. Like, I want to cancel Obama's Netflix show. I think that's stupid. Like, stop worshiping Obama for the love of God, people. So that's stupid. So sure, if they want to shit on Obama, that's fine. But in terms of like who's more funnier, if I had to guess between Jeff Dunham and Barack Obama, that's actually tough because what I saw there, and I've never seen a Jeff Dunham, you know, stand up special, so maybe it's different. What I saw there was awful. Um, and I think anyone could possibly be more funny than Jeff Dunham. And I'm not saying that, like, the the puppet thing is stupid. I think that that, that could be funny. It could work. But your jokes are not funny. What I saw there was stupid and cringeworthy. Uh, it was boomer humor. And if that's what you're presenting, then cancel culture isn't what you have to worry about. You just need better material. Because your shit's stupid, my dude. Your shit is stupid. So do better. Um, having said that, though, I do agree with the overall sentiment that Obama should not have a comedy show on Netflix because that is just stupid. And the only reason why he got that isn't because he's funny. It's because he's Obama. So, yeah, all around, um, weird. <laughs> Jeff Dunham on Fox News. Serious News Network, folks. Serious News Network. Beta male, not a beta male.